Um, my name is Mark Nebia, and if you're seeing this, it means that I didn't make it to Edinburgh despite two attempts on Thursday and Friday. I'm, I'm really, of course, sorry to not be there in person, but I'm really grateful for um, the two organizers, Manuel and Soren, to allow me to uh, present in this uh, sort of remote way. Uh, <clears throat> I We'll be talking again uh, about Tripilia megasites. Um, some of you might have heard them uh, during the keynote speech of David Wenger on uh, Thursday, and of course uh, from Bizerkas and John's uh, talk. Uh, the way I will um, tackle the the issue of uh, Tripilia megasites and whether they could be uh, considered as urban form or not, or or maybe if there's a yet a different um, a different option is through looking at um, taking it to a different scales of analysis and looking at uh, the broader starting from the broader network of Cucuteni Tripilia settlement system and uh, scale it down to the Tripilia uh, side of the network and uh, and then looking into the hinterland of Nebelivka, which is the site that we investigated more broadly and even within a hint of spatial patterning within uh, the site itself. Uh, by doing that, I will propose a number of uh, analytical um, analytical toolkits that could be useful uh, and could be potentially applied to um, other regions and other uh, scenarios. The first question that comes to mind is, of course, what is a city? Uh, but I'm sure there will be a lot of debate. There has been uh, a lot written on it, and uh, there will be a lot of debate during the session, so I'll leave it there for now. What I'm going to use are a few key aspects of how cities have been described in the past as um, specific places, large, specific large uh, settlements where a diverse range of people, of individuals come together to perform um, specific activities, communal activities, shared activities, which were different from um from what they were the activities performed in the non uh, non urban um settlements and uh, and trying to propose um a number of a series of at, not attributes but like definitions of what we can uh how we can call how we can um see these tripilia mega sites within the transition from village to urban lifeways. Uh, this is just a reminder of where we are located and uh, the extent of the Kukuteni Tripilia network and the location of Nebelivka and the chronological span of uh, Tripilia across two millennia and in specific the eight centuries of existence of uh, mega sites. Recently, uh, Harper and Yachenko have published an uh, excellent data set of uh, sites across uh, Romania, Moldova and Ukraine of Neolithic and Neolithic settlements, which gives a um, great chronological framework for our study. And we'll see how uh, Kukuteni Tripilia and Tripilia megasites fits within this framework. Here we take uh, three time slices, early Neolithic, and we see the distribution with the proportioned density map of um, settlements within that time slice. And we see a movement, a shift in the Tripilia A phase, so uh, uh, fifth millennium, towards east, towards the Black Sea, probably linked to a search for uh, salt sources. And, and then a shift in Tripilia B1 and then until C2 uh, in uh, towards the north and the east. And we see uh, how the mega sites uh, here in yellow as yellow circles are located at the fringe of this network, but the network is quite vast at the moment. And this is also again an important concept to keep in mind uh, when 
when defining the urbanity of uh, of mega sites we will come back to that later now the question this pose a question why uh, are mega sites located here at the fringes of uh, Tripilia area of influence at the border if you wish with the with the step um with the eastern step the way we tackle this was uh, to perform a dual step logistic regression to see whether there were any environmental uh, conditions specific environmental conditions that um uh, drove the location of triple uh, of mega sites in the in that area first was to test whether in general tripilia settlements are dependent statistically dependent strongly dependent on environmental variables and with the first logistic regression says that yes confirms that there is a strong uh, dependency on environmental variables but if we then compare mega sites against non mega site tripilia settlements there isn't uh, much of a difference so uh, mega sites are not looking at different environmental uh, settings compared to other mega sites which means that the reason why they are located where they are has to do with something different from environmental um, um so probably something related to social practices or political practices uh, what happens to the settlement network when when uh, mega sites uh, appeared we see that um, we imagine that if we have uh, the emergence of such large settlements you will have a, um, an increase in site size variability and potentially the development of a, a multi-tiered hierarchy of uh, of sites but this is not what happens with the uh, Gini coefficient which is an index of a measure of statistical dispersion uh, we can see that the sides variability of sites is quite constant during the the main three phases of mega sites which means that there isn't a strong uh, hierarchical um, structure of settlements which is usually linked to a strong political uh, hierarchy also uh, what happens is that with the increase if we plot the number of mega sites through time against the number of other sites we see that there's a, a linear um, increase and they are uh, related in a sort of a linear way which means that at the increase of mega sites we have an increase of smaller settlement which pose against the argument of a massive influx of people in mega sites and the abandonment of uh, of the rural if not just to support the um the uh the mega sites which is something that will will come back to it so we have mega sites and smaller uh, smaller sites existing and uh, expanding at the same time now what happens in terms of uh spatial distribution uh we have uh, we we can see from the uh, five uh, slides from the five uh, maps here an increased tendency towards uh, settlement nucleation with the apex in the phase c1 which is the, the phase in which we have the higher number of mega sites and uh and also of non-mega sites uh, the graphs here are um, per correlation functions that allows sorry it's a bit small but allows you to uh, establish the uh, sort of the statistical significance of clustering on a multi-scalar level so at short scales we have uh, clustering which means that even um, like community villages seems to be uh, nucleating not only uh, um, yeah not only the mega sites um, another sort of measurement of this nucleation is um, when we introduce the the value of site size is at what scale this uh, uh, nucleation becomes uh, significant and we see that for the three phases of three main phases b1 b2 and c1 of mega sites we have a more or less constant uh, scale of interaction of 100 kilometers so within a 100 kilometers neighborhood the nucleation is statistically of of site size is, is significantly is statistically significant 
which means that uh, something is happening within a hundred kilometers from mega site, which is um, which could, we could interpret. We can't we can ignore this threshold that is constant for several centuries. So we could propose this as uh, a scale of social catchment of mega sites. So we could potentially have people uh, seeing mega sites as significantly large within a hundred kilometers radius, which means that we could have people coming from a hundred up to a hundred kilometers to uh, to mega sites. We've seen this uh, already, but what does it mean if we scale down and we moved into the sort of site uh, hinterland? What does it mean in terms of uh, um, ecological signature having movement of people into uh, into the mega site? We um, some of you saw this again uh, from the keynote speech on Thursday. We have. Uh, Poland court suggesting a very, a very little, very low human impact on the local environment, which, uh, which suggests against a permanency, permanent occupation of, of mega sites, a very light touch uh, footprint in the, uh, in the local environment. So, what does that mean in terms of, uh, you know, social interaction, political interaction, and then if we look at the close hinterland at uh, of of Nebelivka. Uh, we see that it's pretty much void around uh, around the site itself but what we have within few kilometers uh, we have Madinesco and Talianki which are uh, the largest of the mega sites to know uh, to our knowledge um, and if we compare the uh, the material culture suggests that they are uh, sort of later of a later phase but if we compare recent uh, modeling of radiocarbon dates we see that there is an overlap between starting date uh, of of all the three and uh, the end date of Nebelivka so potentially uh, we're seeing a transition of occupation from Nebelivka to Talianki and Madinetske with uh, a probably a few decades of overlap, which means, which brings, again, um, questions about competition and um, and overlapping in, in occupation of these mega sites. Finally, uh, if we look at the spatial patterning within uh, Nebelivka, here is uh, it's a way of seeing what uh, what sort of if if there are specific patterns within the site. If we look at the sizes of uh, dwellings, we saw the plan of um, of the site several times in the previous uh, previous talk, and we see how uh, we can model the the site the the house household size to see that the um the, what we call the assembly houses or the larger structures which are evenly quite evenly spaced around uh, within the layout of the settlement could produce could be um sort of described here with a sort of smoother density uh, estimation as uh, sort of foci of uh, neighborhood so we could see the assembly houses as um sort of uh, central building at the center of neighborhood formation so what does let's try to wrap up and see what all these different and scattered uh, pieces of evidence might suggest uh, an unprecedented scale of an intensity of social interaction occurring at mega sites where new social dynamics uh, are emerging and they can and they can be framed as uh urban or urban-like uh, identities without necessarily uh, being converted into a, a sort of a proper uh, settlement, uh, urban settlement form. Uh, and you have at the same time site nucleation, so increased interactions at the community level, not just uh, in, within the mega site, without an apparent site hierarchy and political hierarchy developing. And we saw earlier on also uh, confirmed by the material culture at Nebelivka. So a combination of top down and bottom up processes where you have communities coming together 
potentially on a seasonal basis to mega sites, organize themselves into neighborhood and start interacting collectively in um, within the mega site. So if you want a, 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 a sort of a mega site identity coexisting with uh, a village identity uh, at the same time. Are then Tripilia mega sites cities? Well, here, this in this case, size matter. And here's uh, a comparison between the scale of uh, of mega sites with uh, the scale of smaller uh, smaller um, uh, settlements. Recently, Rene Horao critiques that uh, there is no structural distinction between mega sites and smaller settlements because uh, you have similar planning principles of circuits and open area. But this argument works if we don't introduce chronological development, because if we introduce a chronological development, we see that the, these three sites are later than, uh, so they come after the introduction of these principles. So could be interpreted as those principles developed in mega sites are then transferred to a uh, smaller settlement. Food for thoughts, and this is my last slide. Um, what what we can say for the urban, what this can bring to the urban debate. Well, first thing is that we can go from cities before states, as David Wangrup proposes, to citizen before cities. So decoupling urban identity from a Chaldean urban settlement form, having urban-like identities forming before a formal um urban settlement with institution buildings uh, and uh, all that architectural materialization of uh of a city and then uh of of state in terms of urban sustainability uh the concept of persistence uh proposed by smith and also mentioned in the first uh paper today well tripilia urban identity lasted for 800 years without materialized social hierarchy. So what that, that what does that mean that it can work in Mohejo Daro? We see this is similar, um, a similar situation. Resilience, there is an interesting um, work by Barthel and Isendal where they look at comparing food security resilience between Byzantine Constantinopolis and classic Maya cities and uh, the successful um, the success of the resilience of food security during shocks um, um, episodes is relying on diversification and a combination of centralized and localized administration. So Tripillian dual identities, central and communal, and also individual and localized communities within the same mega site lasted again for 800 years. And then the reason why it failed uh, it could be probably potentially because uh, there was an increased centralization of, of this administration and therefore looking at outcomes of urban trajectories also will help, will also help uh, improve and provide input for uh, urban sustainabilities for the future. Thank you very much. A thought goes to our friends and colleagues in Ukraine and thank you for your attention.